Okay, now that we've downloaded Packet Tracer 5.0, go ahead and open Packet Tracer. We're going to develop the network topology in Packet Tracer for the first lab. If you'll also log in to Blackboard and log into this class, the Cisco 3 class, under the Labs tab you'll find all the Chapter 1 labs. Alright, here is the Packet Tracer interface. Packet Tracer is a network simulating program and it allows you to program routers and switches and develop a network as though you were in a lab environment with the physical equipment. Now this is just a simulation environment but it's a very good resource to help you learn how to program routers and switches and understand how routing and switching occur or what the process is when you have a network that's working. If you look at Blackboard under the Labs tab, Chapter 1 Labs have been added. The first lab is Review of Basic Router Config with RIP. What I'm going to do in this video is show you how to set up your network topology in Packet Tracer. Okay, here's the lab. Notice that you have two routers, a hub, and two PCs that make up your network topology for this lab. Below that, you have the information regarding what you should program the router with. Now, what we are going to do is review RIP version 1. This is a very simple lab. The great thing about it is you can do this in Packet Tracer. If you're not comfortable programming a router, you will have to look back at your Cisco 2 material in order to get comfortable with some of the basic commands. They give you some router command modes and some commands here in order to begin the configuration, but this material should be review if you're in Cisco 3. Okay, so let's begin with our topology. What I'm going to do is have a couple of panes open here so I can look at my topology and work with Packet Tracer at the same time. Let's see how far I can go here. Alright, Packet Tracer. We'll do the same. We'll just sort of minimize it a little so we can have some space to work with. Okay. How to work with Packet Tracer? It's very simple. If you look at the list of devices on the bottom left hand corner, when I click on the first device, a list of devices available that are routers will show up to the right. Also notice the description will also be listed. 1841, this is an 1841 router, a 2620 router. In our topology for the lab, we need two routers. So let me go ahead and select an 1841 router. We're going to pop it in the white space. Take another one, do the same. Okay, we also need a hub and two PCs. So let's find those devices. Okay, this looks like a hub. You notice that it tells you it's hubs. Just use a generic one. We typically don't use hubs anymore in, in, in the networks of today. Uh, you can also use a switch if you want to. But in this case, we're going to use a hub. Let's see. We also need a, a PC. So I click on End Devices and I'm going to just place two PCs out in the white space. Okay. 
Now that we have our devices, we have to connect them. But we can't connect them yet until we actually put in some modular slots or put some serial connections in the module slots. So what you'll do is you'll click on the router and notice it's empty. You have slot 1 and slot 0. They're both empty. This is actually how a router will be packaged to you. The router is separate from the serial or Ethernet connections. These are modular. So you can purchase specific types of connections for your router. First thing you do is power it down. Okay, this little button here is powered down. You never swap modules or swap cables while the router is on. You really shouldn't. People do. Uh, what we're going to do is put a WIC 2T. The 2T WIC has two port asynchronous synchronous serial connections. Right down here is the module and you're just going to drag it in there. And we want a WIC 1 ENET. This is going to be an Ethernet link. And I'm just going to drag it into this slot and power up our router. And if you actually look at the CLI tab, this is command line interface. Like a real router, it'll boot up. Okay. I'm just going to minimize that. I'm going to do the same thing to the other router. A WIC 2T, drag and drop. Oop, it says power's on. Need to make sure that power's off. Okay, WIC 1 ENET. Okay. Now we can power back on. Alright, let that get started. Now the hub should have power on, PC should already have power on. What we need to do next is the connection. So if you look at the little orange thunderbolt, you'll have a description of all the different connections you can place on a network. What we're going to use is console cable. We're going to connect the console cable a console cable is used to program the router or switch. It's a management port. And you, RS-232 is another name for the serial port on the back of a computer. That's where the console cable goes and you connect it to the console port of a router. So for each PC that's going to manage a router, we're going to make a console connection. Okay. Next, I need my PC to connect to the hub. That's a straight through wire connected to fast ethernet to the hub's port zero. And the same type of connection from the hub port one to fast ethernet on our router zero. So we're gonna use zero zero port on that. Let's go over here and do the same connection. This time we're not using a hub, we're going straight to the router, so we're going to use a crossover cable. So from the fast ethernet to the fast ethernet of the router as a crossover. A router is considered a PC. A PC and a router are like devices, so a like device requires a crossover cable. And the last but not least, we need serial connections, so scroll to the right. One side has the clock, which is the DCE side, so we'll make this side the DCE. Take a serial port, connect it to a serial port on the other router. You have completed your network topology for the first lab. This is where this video ends. The next video will begin configuring the router. Before we end the video, go ahead and do a file save as save this packet tracer file lab 1 with your name okay and save this file so that you know what what lab you're doing and you can open it again in packet tracer